know what I'd say. What was just kind of the goal today of the final day of the camp and what necessarily is just going to be the assessment of two days off at the side of it? Well, we wanted to get legs back, obviously, getting into this part of the season. You know, we've gone pretty hard here in camp. And then two, uh, situational football. Like, we had two minutes we had in the game scenarios. Uh, we had a whole bunch of best teams, right? We had a bad day, though. There was a very, very poor focus. Started with the staff, started with myself, to the staff, to the players. That was our worst day of full camp. I saw one of, one of the receivers didn't uh, sit down a route, and then you ran, ran it again. How important cool is like the receiver's ability to recognize coverages and adjust what they're seeing? Be on the same oh, page? yeah, it's huge, especially in the game scenarios. I mean, when you're in the, especially when you're getting inside the 15 end of game scenarios, right? Most routes, you have to be able to adjust them or feel defenders, especially with the unique looks you get, whether it's everybody lining up across the goal line, you're trying to find cracks or throw the ball over and back to the corners. So you have to be very, very dialed in. And like I said, I thought today the lack of focus just wasn't there. The intensity wasn't there like it was in our other helmet practices. Uh, we had practiced really well in our other two helmet practices today. We kind of took the day off, and, and that's my fault. That's our staff's fault for allowing that to happen uh, and just letting it happen. Is there somebody who does that really well on the team, just recognizing situations? And uh, I don't know if there's just one guy. I think like JT has just a really good feel for space. So like the other day in the goal line, he's on a, a like an in cut essentially, and he feels the safety cut him, and he turns it into like a curl back to the quarterback, and they just complete it on his back hip. Uh, so that's just good awareness of space and where he's at on the field. So JT does have a really good just feel for the space. What do you see from the defense playing together as one collective unit? You say they're out here. Yeah, the communication is really good. Uh, sometimes too much communication. Sometimes we got to know who the alpha is, right? If two, we get into a call that's double or triple called or a bunch set adjustment, and we have two guys saying one thing and one guy saying another, right? Who is the alpha? Whose words mean the most, right? Because you could play it two different ways. Right, and uh, based off the situation, and you, know, you really get a third short, or you really get a third long, right? Based off your bunch adjustment, and uh, right now we have too many voices sometimes, uh, which cause confusion, which is a good problem, right? Too many people communicating, but now we got to figure out who's the alpha, who we're going to listen to when multiple people are talking. Have you noticed certain players in those moments where they're uh, all talking? Yeah, Keyshawn, X, Crooks, Zyrus, uh, Cole Martin, uh, Shamari. I mean, all those guys do a good job communicating. Oh, there's Harry day one that you wanted to front load the hardest work of camp. Uh, how well did you guys stick to that and did you feel like it benefited? Yeah, we definitely stuck to it and I won't know if it benefited until, you know, week one when we see how fresh our players feel because that was the whole premise is really get after them, make them tired. Uh, I think we're responding to adversity better. I do think that, uh, you know, we don't complain as much as we have. We'll find out on game day, but uh, we're getting better at that. So I think that was part of the early string we tried to put on them. And uh, the other benefit is the back end, kind of getting their legs back up on them. So we'll find out what they do. Morgan Harris was saying the other day over the Cardinals that he thinks college teams should start playing preseason games, that he thinks it can help. When you have a day like this, we're maybe the focus is there. Do you think a preseason game would be something to consider down line in college football? Oh, yeah, preseason. Anytime you can play football over somebody else, uh, it's huge. I mean, it's how you play the game. The best way to emulate a game is to play the game, and we try to simulate that versus ourselves. Right, but you see the same people over and over and over and over again. Like, you got to try to find a way to break up the monotony of a camp, whereas they get to practice versus other teams, right? To break up the monotony and to get different looks. If you're an odd team, you ain't get to go practice versus a four down team and get different looks, or vice versa, right? If you're an uh, 11 personnel open team, you may get to go play a 13 and 22 personnel team with bunch sets to practice different looks. You don't really get that in college. So, whatever your offense is, whatever your defense is, if you're not getting those looks, Right, if you're not multiple on those sides of the ball, then you've got to create it right with scout teams and walk-ons, but not the speed that the NFL gets to create it as. So I definitely think it would be an advantage. You talked about uh, Subio, but you have some other good offensive walk-ons, Colson Aarons, uh, Kula Kule. Like, what are, like, those guys are kind of on the fringe of, uh, of opportunities. What's, what's it like having them? Yeah, I mean, they're great. They're going to help us. I and mean, all three of those guys, we plan on, we plan on traveling. All three of those guys are uh, – in the depth of the football team that we could put on the field and feel good about. Uh, so, I mean, kudos to those guys for putting in the work and putting themselves in that position that we don't care if you're on scholarship or if you're a walk-on. If you help us win, you're going to help us win. And those are three guys that are going to do that.
for the new guys who haven't experienced what game week is like, at least in Tempe, what is going to be Saturday like? Are you going to try to implement it as like, this is game week, or are you going to say like, this is technically like mid between fall and game week? No, we're going to simulate a game day uh, on Saturday. But uh, obviously, you can do it as best as possible. But we'll all be on the same sideline. We'll go versus the scout team being the other side of the ball so we can flow like a game. Defense coaches can talk after a defensive series on the, on the uh, new surfaces and vice versa. So we'll simulate uh, a game as much as possible. In order to sim- We're not going to be able to simulate the environment or the enthusiasm. Right. Usually this this day, though, there's a little bit of energy because it's a week away, you know, eight days away. There's usually a little bit of, OK, like we've made it. We've made it here. So there's usually a little bit of juice and, and extra focus. Uh, but uh, I mean, our Saturday is our first Tuesday practice for Wyoming. You know, our staff today starts prepping or tonight starts prepping for Wyoming. And uh, it turns in we're now in game week mode. Uh, from a staff perspective and our next real practice. Do you feel like you get your own extra bit of like excitement because of that, knowing that like, hey, game week is only a week away. I'm kind of weird. I, I love the, like practice. Like the games are fun. Yes, I want to win the games and they're competitive and they're great. But like, I love the pra- I love the process. I love seeing the people get the guys get better. Like, I love the process. Like, I absolutely love the process. Like, it pains me when we don't feel like we don't get better or maximize it. That's just as exciting to me. Or not just exciting, but it's very exciting. So, like, yeah, is game day important? But I do the least amount of things on game day than I do all week or all year, really. I'm on game day and I'm calling timeouts and saying, hey, uh, slow sub a guy because they sub with 17 seconds left. Like, the, the amount of things I do on game day versus the prep that leads up to it, my role on game day is, is way smaller than my role throughout the week, getting the most out of the guys, getting the guys prepared, getting the guys mentally and physically ready for the game. Once we get game day, it's, it's on the players at that point. You know, we're just there to put them in the right state of mind. And uh, not with iPads, I guess, you know, cheat. <laughs> or services. Uh, Kenny, um, a couple days ago, you called Elijah O'Neal one of the most improved players in the spring to now. When you were recruiting him out of junior college out of 2022, what specifically did you see in him? Physicality and motor. You know, he was big, he was physical, and he had a motor. And if you're big, physical, and have a motor, um, the rest will probably take care of itself. Um, so I saw those three things. So when mix it all leading up to NFL every day, do you all have any conversations? Is he, yeah, I mean, we, we, we talk quite often. Um, but Bo is so just chill. Um, just go be Bo Nix. That's what I told him before every game. And that's why I text him now before games. Go be Bo Nix. Don't be anybody else. Just go do what you do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We all silly like the mayor.